action, adventure, dandruff, war, coffee, mold, low budget audio, and even lower budget video editing. All in this video today. Yes, today we show you how to repair Leopold hacker keyboard that's been covered in coffee and kind of got moldy. Got eyes on. And split to 37, sound 6, knowledge. I see them, they're moving fast, really fast. Sound 6, field. sound 7, what? Get low. Flight, Roger, we have new 12 reporter going north, northwest out of compound yeah, 29. Uh, we've got squirters inside, we're closing the uh, distance on this. Roger, uh, we're tracking 6, 1, 0, squirters. Roger, uh, 6, flip them to uh, Boston. And Flipper, M Flipper, Spad 37, we count at least 14 squirters. How do you want to divide these up? Uh, north and south, alright. I'll be turning left here in just a second. Roger. Take it, Mark. We're breaking right now. Yeah, so I messed up my keyboard. I have a system, and I've always put my coffee somewhere very specific. But today, this one day, I just put it in the wrong place. And one thing led to another. And I had a moldy keyboard. Like, disgustingly moldy. It worked, but the main result was that a whole bunch of keys that seemed to be around that area where the coffee landed just stopped working. Specifically, the function, the context menu, the control, the alt, the shift, the question mark, the forward space, and full stop. Cracking it open, I found that some of the PCB coating had actually disappeared for some reason. It was flaking off and revealing the copper underneath. What really appeared to be the problem was that a whole bunch of diodes had turned to sort of crumbly cheese. I don't know how or why. And the number of them seemed to correspond with the number of dead missing in action keys. So I cracked out the old Unity multimeter and uh, Samsung's hyperlapse and got to work checking out if there's any signal going through the diodes still. So after testing for which ones were dead, I very carefully desoldered them, trying not to hurt the pads underneath because they probably were also weakened, and using just a little bit of violence, when necessary, cleaned everything up, and got ready to put new diodes in. Unfortunately, all I had on hand were those through-hole 1N418 signal diodes, but with a bit of cello tape, you know, made a plan. And that's it. I hope my video has potentially given you confidence if you've got the same problem and you're wondering, is it worth going in to hunt down dead diodes and fix them? It is, and it's easier than you think. I hope you liked my video. I hope it helped you. Please subscribe, like the video, make a comment below, or even better, do all three. Keep smiling, think positive thoughts, and happy hacking. Goodbye.